These things stink. They really stink. Whose idea was it to put those in a planter right next to a beautiful seating area? That wasn't smart. Yeah, it was me. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. I don't necessarily have a plan put in place for this week's video, but I am here at my sister's house where I've filmed a few times this year. Did some landscaping, some containers, as you can see here. And, uh, um... Well, I haven't been here in a while. Things could use some attention. For one, as I mentioned, these things, the alliums, those don't smell good. Those should not be in those containers. They're cute, but I think could probably find something better to pop into those. I have to come back tomorrow to let the dogs out. So uh, these two are mine, if you don't know. These are mine. Those are hers. <laughs> it's a beautiful day to be outside, and there's like, can we go back in the house? I don't, I don't understand those dogs. I can guarantee you if I were to open that door and let all four of them inside, they're going to go nuts and just destroy the house and have a great time playing. But could we do that outdoors like normal dogs, please? Please, hey Nala. Look how big this one's gotten. She's freaking huge. Turned into a beast, big girl Nala. And uh, very destructive Nala too. She just knocked this over. Watch that happen. Sometimes she likes to stand in these containers and just chew on the trunks of the hydrangea trees. Yeah, I'm talking about you. See that? Just knocked that thing right over. So a lot of what's going on here is heat damage and puppy damage. Yeah, there's the puppy. She does that. She stands in the pots and digs holes in them. Really, really, really appreciative of my dogs right now. They never did anything like that because they're so much better than my sister's dogs. The annuals could use a refreshing or rejuvenation prune and overall i think these really they need some fertilizer to give them some life the maui gold calocasias that are in here those should be triple the size by now it's been an odd year here weather wise we went from drought and cool weather to uh, drought and extremely hot weather to now cool and raining all the time there's a bit a lot of consistency and that doesn't always do the best things for tropicals, right? They like consistently warm temperatures. But getting some fertilizer into the containers I think would help an awful lot. So just doing a mental rundown of things to do over here tomorrow. One, I think need to bring the blower with me, get things cleaned off, also be making a mess. And maybe before coming over tomorrow, we should hit up a nursery. It has to be one that's nearby because I don't have a ton of time to do all this stuff and uh, see if I can't find some fresh annuals to pop into the tops of these. Maybe pull these alliums out, perhaps, if I remember. This is all the stuff's gonna be happening tomorrow. I didn't come prepared to do any of this today. Work those into the landscaping over here. The landscaping, we planted three knockout roses in the early spring. They're looking pretty good. They've done a lot of growing, but they could use some tidying, right? There's a lot of weeds. I'm gonna get some weeds pulled up. Oh, there's a ton. Look at all these weeds. Lots and lots of weeds. And then again, I think fertilizing would be helpful. If I had time, what I would love to do would be to get a drip set up out here, but I don't know, it's kind of a big project. I will poke around in the morning and see what would be needed for back here. I would think this is a narrow bed, so I could probably get this done with three micro emitters, sprayers, instead of actual drip heads. And then one for the lemon over here, which needs to be potted up, so hopefully I can remember tomorrow. To grab some citrus soil while I'm looking for some annuals. And then uh, uh, I'd say each one of these is going to need two variable drip heads to go on them. The Y valve and a timer. This is this is actually going to be kind of a tricky one to pull off because I don't really, maybe I, if I have a two zone timer, then I will use that. But I don't know if I do have a two zone timer to use. If I only have a one zone timer, then I need to find a splitter and hope that there's enough water pressure. They have amazing water pressure here, so I don't think that's going to be an issue, but I'm going to have to run a line around this corner and up to the edge of that container. And then with this one, in order to keep the dogs from pulling it up all the time, it's gonna have to be tucked in very, very tightly to everything to get the drips of their own oh, the roads too. So it's gonna be two, four, five, six sprayers or drip heads, and then I think three Micro sprayers should be good for this spot. You having fun, Tobes? I know, I brought you over here for a playtime with your cousins and nothing. Y'all are lame, why don't you wanna play? What's the deal? It's not hot, it's 77 degrees outside. It is an absolutely gorgeous day. You're getting a 
45 minute break to run around and play, you have to go back inside into a crate. Why do you want to go back inside? You have water, you have food. They're ridiculous. If they were at my house right now, it would just be nonstop chaos running around. But over here, they're like, can we go inside? I want to go inside. Lame. So that's the backyard. I don't want to put too much on the plate, but let's have a look at the front yard too. Like, you think you're going? I know, you're bored. So your friends won't play with you. Back up both of Toby. Uh-uh, where are you going? You can't go. Get back. Toby, uh-uh-uh-uh, get back. Get back, Toby. You can't do that. Thought I was being so nice bringing the dogs with me for a play date, and they just like, nah, we'd rather go home and sleep and do nothing. Wow, okay. I haven't really taken the time to look at this. There are a lot of weeds. Maybe I'll get in here and get to work on some of that. And, uh, this needs mulch. Fertilizer. These paniculata hydrangeas. One here and one there, those should be in bloom by now. What's standing out to me the most are these two roses here, which um, one of them's hidden by one of those weeds and the other one's hidden by a milkweed vine. So those, I think those should probably just get dug up because they haven't been doing all that great over here. The roses, you know, they require a different level of care. These are David Austin roses. I, maybe they would be better suited for the backyard where they'll be seen more often and it would be easier to remember to water them. Saw those knockout roses in the back. They're looking great. A little bit warm right now. Not today, but it's going to get warmer for uh, transplanting. But I think that this might be a good spot for those boxwood topiaries that I have. You may have seen them in other videos. If not, then you'll see them if I get around to this to put a lollipop in front of each one of these poles height wise i think that would work out well and uh it might be a little bit less jungly because things have gotten pretty messy over here if i were to run drip over here i don't want it to oh, it'd be so much work it's not that much work it's just uh it requires some planning but i would only need one timer and probably uh, geez how many the large circle emitters can go eight to ten feet so one uh, two we well, can't use those right here that's just going to spray all over the patio there's really anything planted right there, so that's probably fine. I could do one right there and then uh, just have a single head over here, over there. One, two, three, I need four of those. Sorry, just, I don't know if y'all are interested in the part where I try and figure this stuff out. And then these containers up here. Huh. I don't want this to come across like I'm over here just ripping on everything. It has been a difficult year and they're new to gardening they've never done any of this before so uh, it's i'll be very kind i'm doing my best the main thing i'm seeing when i'm looking at these is uh well one they've gotten cooked a little bit just a smidge which is weird because they were doing great before like just a few weeks ago but they're definitely getting cooked i also i'm looking at this yeah, those are bone dry they're not getting watered so that's probably part of the problem over here that's bone dry. Yeah. Okay. So drip might be useful over here because these aren't getting watered. I had been looking at this Rose of Sharon here, which is just, isn't it beautiful? Great flowers on this one. And wondering if what's going on is an iron deficiency. That's what I was thinking a few days ago. The leaves were more green with more yellow spotting in them. A few more days have passed and I could still see how that could be. What's going on? Iron deficiency, <laughs> iron deficiency, see the yellowing in the veins. Potentially that could be what's going on. I think that there's a combination of potentially some deficiency here. And more than anything, I think that this, I really, this is, it's just a thirsty plant. It needs more water and I'd say a fresh application of some continuous release fertilizer and a nice heavy drink of liquid fertilizer so watering can and fertilizer i need to add that to the list i this would be ideal to get onto drip probably more so than the backyard but like i said i don't i don't know how much time i have for all this and the weeding alone would take a very long time i might just leave the weeding up to them and do the drip it happens to all of us weeds get out of control y'all yeah, i've seen plenty of weeds in my yard before not the end of oh, excuse me why are you so ready to go go play with your friends burn off some energy yeah, weeds happen. Not judging here when it comes to <laughs> weeds. So there's the rundown. And a little bit of a garden update for what's been going on over here. Need to prune that off of that can of two. When it comes to the drip, I imagine what will end up happening is I will load up a tote with a ton of drip supplies. And I'll end up not having everything I need, but it'll be enough to at least get things started. And uh, that'll probably be a multi-day thing, just because drip, when you're first setting it up, there are so many little things to remember. 
and this isn't my yard, so I don't have everything memorized out here. Just the <laughs> beautiful Vista bubblegum hanging baskets that I got them. Yeah, it was like 103 degrees and then get watered. It happens. Something else that I think would be fun to do. A turbo, would you come over here? Come over here, good boy. I have tons of Semper Vivums at home that I have wanted to tuck into these cracks. That's why I got them. So that might be a project as well, or maybe a separate video, because this is this is a lot to try and pull off tomorrow between 10 a.m. and like 1.30 in the afternoon, but I bet you can probably get a lot done. Uh, yeah, we'll pick up from a nursery or garden center of some kind tomorrow, or at home. Yeah, probably at home, because I'm going to have to gather supplies. I'm dragging, you, if I'm doing all this, I'm dragging y'all along for all the, all the stuff that's not fun, which is the preparation. Hi, next day I'm at Lowe's also. Look at that, isn't it beautiful? I think I have everything in here that I'm going to need. They have heliconias too, I'm getting some heliconias. It's a big deal, they never had these here. Also, it's um, I think 101 right now, so I don't really know how much this I'm actually gonna be filming, but get it done and walk through it at some point. These are nice. Okay, back at the house. Here's a look at what's been done. Couldn't film it, it was too high. Had to get it done. Didn't plant anything, obviously, but we'll just talk about what got done. Mulch. Looks much better, right? Nice, heavy layer of mulch. Weeds have been pulled, and... Drip has been run, hence the last clip. Do I need to do some explaining here? I think I might. Beginning of the video where I was walking around going, Oh, look at the plants, they're so sad, there's so many weeds. That was filmed a week prior to uh, this video. My intention was to film all that, and then, like I said, then tomorrow I was going to come back out. Well, tomorrow ended up being the day that construction started at my house. And the contractor was like, hey, I'm going to get going on the floors and electricians are going to be coming over to be working on lighting and all sorts of things. So I wasn't going to be able to spend three hours here. I think I'd said from like 10 to 3 or something like that or 10 to 1 I'd be over. I don't know. Regardless, couldn't do that. I just came over, let the dogs out, let them run around for like 15, 25 minutes, something and went home. I was like, whatever, I'll do it next week. But then the forecast changed and it's like the hottest week on record almost here in St. Louis <laughs> and um, not a great time to be planting things or even fertilizing when it's this hot you just want to water so instead of having a fun video where there's going to be a lot of nice before and afters we're just going to piece our way through this here's what I was able to get done like I said couldn't film it it was just too hot cameras overheating constantly but weeds were pulled drip line has been put in that was my main objective was to get drip put in because i just feel bad for them with the watering of plants like the spinderella here who clearly needed water we saw those planters on the front porch they were thirsty and these are plants that just need a lot of water with the forecast saying that it was going to be so unbelievably hot i figured drip needed to be the main priority so i came over <laughs> on sunday which is, according to the forecast was supposed to be the coolest day of the week the heat was supposed to come in right after instead that ended up being the hottest day of the week like i said between 104 and 111 got different readings from different places but whatever it got done it got done uh, in a very quick manner pretty much just tossed together to make sure the plants that really need a lot of water are getting water so the paniculata hydrangeas which should be blooming right now but they're not, they're on drip, and they actually, I think they do look better. The Spinderella's looking great compared to what it looked like just a week ago, so I think it's very much enjoying the drip. And this has been, it's been about five days since the drip got put on. The containers, I think that they still have a chance. <laughs> Maybe. Having them on drip is certainly going to help. I came in and I cut back the coleus. It could probably use more cutting back than this. I do think they need fertilizing. Also totally possible that the yellowing that we're seeing in here is just because they weren't being watered well enough. When it's nitrogen deficiency, usually that starts from the bottom and works its way up. With the chlorosis and iron deficiency, there's heavy yellowing discoloration in the veins specifically, and there is some of that. But oh, I just had a bug fly right into my eyeball. But I'm thinking that these were just going through spells of inconsistent watering. They can get a liquid fertilizing and some continuous release. But not right now, there's no point. It's too hot. Dew point is 76. It's like just walking around in a cloud out here. There was unfortunately one hiccup. There's not a deer over here, is there? No, we're okay? Okay. You'll remember that time earlier this summer I came around, there's just a baby deer laying right there. So here's where the drip starts. Ran into an issue with this though, and the issue is that when this is opened, 
all the way. Yeah, that doesn't work. Can't leave it like that. That was a terrible sound. I'll have to turn the audio down since that's not going to be killing anybody's ears. I don't hate y'all. Looks like some things do need to be tightened up over here, seeing a few drips. This can't run automatically, but it's still better than it was before. So all I have to do is hit this manual button, set the time, hit OK, go inside, come back out and turn the valve off. Open the valve first, right? And that's important. The water needs to be able to get through there. Still not having to stand out here in the heat and water everything by hand. And regardless, they had to come over and open the knob, grab the hose, pull it out, water everything, go back over there, turn it off. Now they just have to open a valve, hit a button, come back later, turn the valve back off. Much easier, it just wanted this to be done with the heat that was coming in because nobody wants to be standing outside when it says hot water and plants. Getting the new shrubbery put in, well obviously that's not happening, it's just way too hot. There's no point, I don't wanna risk killing anything. So maybe in a couple of weeks, when there are some more shrubs coming out for fall plantings, can pull these roses up, pop in some boxwoods, and uh, probably just move the roses somewhere where they aren't cooking quite as much when we have these random heat spells. They would be doing fine if it weren't for the fact that we randomly have days where it's like 102, but otherwise it's typically in the upper 80s to mid 90s, somewhere in there. I think it looks much better. It's a slow improvement. You know, real gardening, things don't happen overnight, and videos like to have a dramatic beginning and end, but it's just, that's, that's not reality right now. What are our thoughts on a crepe myrtle right here? This neighborhood's warmer than mine. It's right down the street from mine. There are crepe myrtles everywhere here. They don't, they just die in the winter back at my house, which is, I don't know, a mile and a half away as the crow, the straight line, you know, crow fly, whatever that's called. Neighbors over there, I don't want to film their house, but they have some beautiful crepe myrtles out front. So be a good spot for one right here. Maybe a Neches, something, some big white, flowers on it. I mean, I'd prefer something more colorful like a Tuscaroo, but I feel like something white would be more their style. And that would look nice with the Spinderella. And I have a Natchez that needs to be dug up and moved somewhere. Could be a good spot for it. Okay, the dogs would probably like me to let them out. Hi, Lou. How you doing, baby? You want to go out? I know I was standing outside talking. I probably should have let him out first. Here's the little baby, giant baby. He's getting so big. Hi, Nala. All right, can you sit? Nala, sit. Nala, sit. You can do it. Sit. Okay, that'll do. That'll do. Come on out. Good girl. Let's go potty. There you go. Go potty. Louie, you have to go potty too. This is it. This is your chance. I have shit I gotta do today. Come on, man. I don't understand dogs that don't want to go outdoors. What are you? You're not dogs. These are cats. You throw a toy. They don't get it. You say hi to them. They're just like, whatever. Come on. Be a dog. It's so weird having to convince dogs to go outdoors, like to basically trick them to come out here. But uh, nothing much has changed in the back. Haven't done any new plantings because again, the heat, there's drip set up though. But again, it was very quick drip because as I mentioned, it was incredibly hot the day that we were doing this. Did a half inch line that runs through this bed right here with micro sprayers about every six feet, something like that at a 180. So those micro sprayers will just go through here. Not going to spray the wall. Still plenty of weeding to be done. I'm anxious to see how the bananas respond to irrigation. I bet that those in the cannas are going to do a lot of growing now. And then the half inch line pinches off right here, runs to a quarter inch line that goes behind, under the rug and around. And I teed off that line into the lemon tree. That drip is turned down pretty far since this doesn't get saturated. Don't want to be sopping wet and they're opened up fairly wide for the roses and for these planters right here. I bet these will respond well to being on drip too. And more than anything, I think that they're probably just happy to not be standing outside in these temperatures and having to water these plants. These planters take a very long time to water. I've had to water them before when they've been out of town. It gets boring. You just stand here and just, you know, well, you know how watering works. <laughs> just hold the hose there, but it takes a long time to get the water to move through. The drip is going to make a big difference with that. Uh, my sister talked about the alliums. They are 100% on board with moving these things out of here. It wasn't an issue when the planters were placed over here and there was a table over here and you were sitting not right next to them. But the thing is, they just stink. I think I talked about at the beginning of the video. I don't remember though, because remember that was over a week ago for me. So those are going to go. They'll get moved into the landscaping probably and uh, put some fall annuals or something of the sorts in here. But again, that's going to have to wait a week or so for things to cool off. I really, I think that the heat is peaking in a few days and then... Basically, right after this video comes out, I think it's supposed to cool back off into normal August, September temperatures. 
Hopefully. I really, really hope it does. I like the heat, but not like this. This is too much. Oh, I'm supposed to be finishing talking about the drip. So ideally with the drip, had it not been triple digit temperatures outside, would have done a half inch line, which I did right here. Brought that to right here, put an elbow on there, and then just put it barely below the soil right here. Another 90 degree elbow right there, and then taken that down to here. And that way the quarter inch line could tee up from this side and it wouldn't be visible like it is right now with it running across the patio. That obviously it's not ideal, but it was just so hot that this is what had to be done. It was not digging a trench out in that kind of heat. So when things do cool off, I'll tap into there. I already have an adapter on the end of this half inch line so that I can just put a line right in there. This little piece will connect right to it do everything I just said, leave the quarter inch for the stuff on this side of the patio, make a cut on this end, put a plug in it, make a cut on this end, and then put a connector in it and connect it over here to where the half inch line will be. And then it won't really even be visible. It'll be nice. As far as the baskets are concerned, obviously these are toast. <laughs> I'm not going to try it and bring them back. That one doesn't have any hope. That one has a little bit of life in it. They'll need to go up on drip because I'm thinking maybe watering just may not be uh, their favorite thing to do. And that's okay. I get it. I'm not judging. We all have our different garden styles. I'm thinking Xyriscape might be more their style or stuff with elaborate drip. I can definitely relate to that. The drip for these will have to be put in along these posts and I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave that all up to them. I don't like to do anything where I'm screwing into any sort of structures, anything of the sorts. We spent a long time working on the drip together. I taught them a lot about the drip. My brother-in-law really seemed into it. It's fun. You know, you got all these different connectors and fittings. There's just so much you can do with it and ways you can customize it especially when we were at the hardware store and you saw the aisle full of all the different parts that you could pick from. It's neat. I think that this is something that's totally manageable. Everybody can do it. They'll be able to do it and add on to it. Have the same problem, I believe, with this faucet back here. So a plumber is going to have to come out and replace these spigots, I think. Or maybe they just need to be taken apart. They might need a new O-ring. I don't know. But it's still the same thing as I was saying for the front yard. At least it's just turning a valve, pushing a button, coming back later, and closing the valve. Still easier than standing outside and watering. She was saying that it was taking them about an hour and a half, something like that. Maybe an hour to water the front and the back when it was really hot out. Especially because the air has been more dry this year. Not this week. This is the stickiest week I can ever remember. But the last couple summers have been dry. So I've had to use a lot more water for the plants. Dry as far as humidity is concerned. So yeah, there's all that. Updates on the planters. <laughs> you can see how they've been doing. They uh, hung out on the struggle bus for a while. As did things in most people's gardens here because the temperatures have just been so weird. Up and down and up and down. And then there's a learning curve. New gardeners. This is their first go at all this. I think everything's looking pretty good considering all of that. Uh, in a week or two, come through. Give all the petunias a prune. Probably should have done that a few weeks ago, but it's not my house, so I didn't really think about it. I hadn't been here in a while. Find some nice annuals to make these look nice with and maybe get some things done in the front yard and stake up the dahlias. I should have brought stakes with me. That could have been done in the heat. I just, I didn't think about it. Is anybody else that like one of your worst things in the gardening, in the garden, <laughs> is to remember to stake things up? I have so many things in my backyard that are flopped over that need to be staked up. I just always forget to do it. Something I'll need to get on top of. Oh, hey, look at that. One of the dahlias is budding. It was uh, questionable whether or not those were even going to make it because of how late they got planted. So I'm glad to see that. That's everything for what's going on over here. There's been some cleanup, not the dramatic before and after that I was hoping for, but... At least some stuff got done. Another reason I didn't film the process of setting up the drip is because I have done it so many times on this channel. I'll link the videos where I've done it before down below. I have I, at least one video dedicated just to drip. So there's nothing else in it. It's just setting up drip. I feel like it's a lot of been there, done that. If I'm just like doing a few little things here and there, that's one thing or doing something new. Sure, but this is just very standard drip irrigation stuff. These roses could use some tidying too. They're doing great though, aren't they? The knockout roses. Fantastic. Great rows for people who are new to gardening. You want to keep them encouraged. It's like, hey, just plant these, give them water. They'll be fine. They could definitely use some reshaping. This time of year, I don't really think it's something I'd be concerned about. I'm just going to let them keep blooming and then closer to fall when it's cooler outside they can get a good cut back. Probably a good 50% needs to come off of those. Fertilizer. I have to remember next time I come over here to bring liquid fertilizer, continuous release fertilizer, 
and plants, a lot of plants in my pruning shears. That'll probably be a different video sometime in September, I'm guessing. Thanks for hanging out. I know it's a weird one, sorry. Just doing what I can do with the weather that we've had and the construction going on at my house. Trying to make it work. Mostly just a lot of walking and talking, but sometimes that's all people want to watch. Maybe that was for you. Maybe that was your bag. I don't know. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life. Everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And comment down below. Say hi. Love talking to everybody what's going on in your gardens. Everybody doing okay over there in SoCal. Some of y'all are in Hawaii. I know the weather's been pretty rough for a lot of people. That's why with this heat, I'm not really complaining. It's hot and humid. We're at least getting rain. At least we don't have a hurricane, quake, tornado situation going on here. Like what's been going on over on the west coast and in the desert. Are you guys, they're just, just chewing on each other's faces, huh? Ridgebacks are weird. I'm used to my basic Labradors and mutts that are just, you know, typical dogs. They're like the goldfish of dogs. I'll be real here. There's nothing fancy about them. But they just give you everything you want in a dog. They're just loving and playful and crazy. And these guys, they're playful and crazy and loving in their own way. Uh, I probably, should I, I, should I stop this? Hey, 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 hey. Guys, don't, but maybe don't. Let's not. No, hi, you're very cute. Don't dig up the yard. You don't need to do that. Don't dig up the yard. You're such a sweetheart. Hey, Nala, such a good girl. But they were finally doing something. I feel bad for telling them. Oh, but no, they come to my house and play around. We're not doing that. No, no. Come on. Come on. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. Yeah, I'm not going to let you guys do that and come over to my house and tear up my yard. I don't think so. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. You want treats? You want cookies? Want the cookie party? It's time for a cookie party. Come on. Come on. Good boy. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing those faces. Bye-bye.